Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and praise the Lord again. Today is Wednesday, and we're in the middle of the week. I want to welcome you especially to this episode of Questions Answered. God bless you for tuning in. God bless you for joining us on Facebook and on YouTube. One thing I want to ask you to do this evening, depend on the time you are watching this message or watching this program, is to send a message. Let me know where you are watching from. Let me know where you are. I want us to get interactive this evening. So say hello and um, let me know where you are watching from this evening. Okay. God bless you so much. Now, today's episode is another amazing episode with fantastic um, sessions. Uh, I'll be taking you to the Anakazu campus um, in a town in Ghana here called Mampong, a very beautiful campus where I'll be having a conversation with a very good friend of mine, Bishop George. I believe you will be blessed by our conversation on the mountain. And uh, I will also be taking you to a beautiful garden called the Vineyard of Engedi. It's at the First Love Center in the city of Accra. Uh, I'll be telling you something. I'll be reading out a question in the Model, model Marriage book and then uh, I will also read out the answer because I know the question is a question that is on people's mind and the answer will be a solution to somebody's marital challenge. So once again, God bless you for joining us on um, Questions Answered. This is a special program that has been tailored just for you so that you can be able to ask your questions, questions that bother your mind, questions you've been waiting and wanting to ask but have not had the opportunity to ask. On this program, you can ask your questions and we will trust the Lord, pray for the help of the Holy Spirit to be able to answer your question. Now, before we start, I would like you to help me this evening to spread the news and tell the whole world that questions answered has just begun. All right, so I'm looking at my time here and... Uh, I want us to use the next exactly 60 seconds. That is one minute, okay, to go out there and, okay, let me do it two minutes. All right, so let's use two minutes to go out there, copy the link. If you are watching on YouTube, you can copy the link. There's a place on your YouTube interface. When you tap on the share button, you can be able to copy the link, share the link with your friends on, on YouTube. Now, on Facebook, you can do two things. You can copy the link and you can share. There are two different buttons on the Facebook interface. Share and then copy. So first of all, tap on the share button and then please share this broadcast on your Facebook wall for me. So if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, you can kindly go to Facebook and do that for me. Okay, just for us. Let's push this good work. Let's make the whole world know that there's a great program. Questions answered. So you can also be blessed. All right. Great. So let's do this together on Facebook and on YouTube. Let's go out there and invite our friends. You can also call. You can also um, place to share the link. Share the links on your old school pages, um, class pages, family group pages, anywhere, everywhere. Let everybody know that questions and answers is here. If you have been blessed previously in... Um, our program, during our program, then please do me a favor today and let's share the link. Two minutes, two minutes. I'm counting right here. So I'm waiting for you quickly. Let's share the link and come back. All right. Transformed by the word, transformed by the word, by the renewing of your mind. 
all right, all right, all right, all right. I can look at my time, looking at my time right now, I can see that our two minutes is already up. So thank you and God richly bless you for helping us to share the links and get our friends and family members and everyone to know that Questions Answered has begun. Once again, God bless you. My name is Pius and I'm your host for this program. This is a very spiritual program. Through this program, you will be blessed. So make sure you have something, a note, a paper, a pen, something to write. And uh, if you have a tablet separately from the one you are using to watch this program, please get something to note down. Or you can take your time and watch this broadcast after the live stream and make sure that at the end of today, by the end of today's program, you have noted down some lessons, some scriptures, and any other thing that you are picking up and learning. Well, today, I'll be taking you um, straight away to Mampong, the beautiful mountains of Mampong, at the beautiful Bible school, the Anakazo Bible school, where I had a conversation with my friend and brother, Bishop George. Bishop George is that friend we share a lot of things like scriptures and I read this book, I saw this line, I saw, I caught this revelation. He's one of the people I enjoy sharing um, with. He also shares a lot of things with me. So I stumbled on him on, on, on Anakazo campus and hey, I just put the camera on us and said, let's talk about something. And he shared some deep things about how to read a, a spiritual book, Christian literature and benefit from it greatly okay now but before we go to listen to that conversation i would like to tell you again that this program is called questions answered okay so what we do is that we take your questions and then we trust the lord together with the help of the holy spirit and then bring you answers from the bible's point of view because of that it will also be very important that we let you have the number which you will need to send your questions. So right now, I'm going to also give us 60 seconds, one minute. Our technical men are going to put the number on the screen. Please, it's a WhatsApp number. And of course, the code is plus 233, which is the Ghana code. So it's a WhatsApp number. Please save this number on your phone and then search out for us on your WhatsApp contact. What question do you have? Is it about this last Sunday's sermon? Is it about the struggle you are going through? Is it about something you heard from a preacher or you read in a book which you didn't really understand? Or is it about an experience you have in your Christian life? You can ask any question at all. That is the number on the screen. We'll be waiting for your questions so we can be able to also answer. Remember, this program is exactly one hour or less. We do our best not to exceed one hour. So if you have to send your question, please make sure you send your question now. Okay, so 60 seconds, send your questions right now. Waiting for you. Next segment, I'm taking you right to the Anakazu campus, Mampo. Let's go and listen to this conversation with Bishop George, and we will be coming back. I'm right here with my good friend, 
Bishop George. Bishop George, good evening. Bishop Pius, good evening. <laughs> what a shock. What a shock. You know, um, this coming week, we have a program called Questions Answered. Okay. Where we have our, our viewers mm -hmm. sending in their questions and we answer. Okay. And um, just this Wednesday, we had a very interesting time. Okay. I had a lot of questions coming in about offenses. Offenses? Yes. Um, hello, Bishop Powers. I'm so offended. My yes. pastor has offended me. Yes. I'm offended in my church. We want you to go deeper and explain. Because one person asked a question about offenses. Okay. How do I heal because I'm offended? And I'm, I mean, I've had a lot of questions coming in. On offenses. On offenses. Yes. So I recommended a book okay. written by Bishop Dagi Wadman. That's right. And I just want to uh, ask you to just say something small about how to read and benefit from the books of the prophet. Mm. Yeah. That is a big one. <laughs> it's a question. It's a question. And this program is questions, <laughs> questions answered. answered. <laughs> <laughs> how to read and be blessed. Yes. From Bishop Dagi or Mills. Yes, because well, last week I made mention of the fact that people read um, such books like they are reading newspapers, you know, and they don't seem to see the impact. But there's a way to read. It's true. And then to be blessed. And people read it as though they were reading a novel. Exactly. Or you are reading, a, how do you call it? Cinderella. A Cinderella or some Dan Brown book. Yeah. You know, but mm. Bishop Dyke's books are spiritual books. Yes, sir. So the spirit must be key, mm. must lead. Mm. You know, the Bible says that that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Yes. Sir. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Yes. When the book is read in the flesh, mm. it, it cannot benef benefit oh. you. Mm. Uh -huh. And so I would say that <clears throat> one of the keys yes, I would suggest is to read mm. slowly. One, read slowly. And read slowly. And also, mm. don't read in a hurry. Okay. It's like I want to finish chapter two. Yes. There's no, there's no rush mm. here. There's no point to mm. rush through to chapter two, chapter four. Chapter, no, yeah. take your time. Mm. And also, to to make use of the table of contents. Okay. Because I find Bishop Pius. Okay. That Tell us. Looking at the table of contents, the yes. Holy Spirit speaks through the table of contents. Come on now. Because He will pick from the table of contents mm. what is relevant. Mm. To you now, exactly. I mean, you are talking as though you were in the studio um, last week when I I I, I wasn't. So I wasn't. when when I read the question, I told the person who asked the question that the best thing I can do is to read the table of oh, contents. Oh no 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 no! The table of contents. Is very, so very important. during the, um, the show, I actually read mm. the table of contents. You'll be and were blessed. Yes, just by reading. You'll be, you'll be amazed how blessed you are just by reading <laughs> the table of contents. Exactly. And then you you will notice that you'll be directed maybe to chapter nine. Mm. What you need now yes. is not to start from chapter one. Yes, sir. You need chapter nine or chapter mm. ten. Mm. And that's where the Lord is going to speak to you through. Mm. Yeah. You see, yeah. I find people who want to read spiritual book cover mm. to cover mm. are not really being led because... Ah. You know, I saw in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 19, verse 10, yeah. the Bible says that she was fruitful mm. and full of branches mm. by reason of many waters. Wow. So wow. many waters, you, you understand waters to mean the word of the God. The word of God. Mm. So surrounded by many mm. waters. Mm. So being reading multiple books, even mm. at the same time, mm. Mm. Uh, it's a key. It's a key. It's not like, oh, I'm, I'm on... Loyalty and disloyalty. Uh, one book. So I'm on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. it, it I find that when yeah. you have a mixture of the books, yes. when you are surrounded by it, yes. and you are being led by the Spirit, mm. chapter by chapter, yes, topic sir. by topic. Yes, sir. I think it was interesting when the Bible said that Jesus found the place where it was written. Wow. That the Spirit he, of the Lord is mm. upon me. Like he, fa he, he found. He knew. The where, place, the where it was. was. All right. Do you see? And yes. that's somebody who reads slowly. Yeah. Somebody who took his time, yeah. has gone through the book, mm. has mm. meditated the mm. book, muttered the book. Yeah. You you quote the point. Yeah. You write the point mm. somewhere. Yeah. It's like the more of the 
the word you engage with. Mm. You quote, you write, you scribble, you note, yes. you make your own point, you scribble somewhere. That's why the book of the law is very important. Come on, now. I mean, reading tablets, etc., is powerful, but mm. sometimes you need to also write. Write, make notes. Make notes because then mm. it is mm. entering into yes, you. Sir. Uh, so yes, sir. I, I feel like that's, that's, that's a key oh. that I would love to, to share. Wow, Bishop George. Thank you so much. You yes. shared very powerful things with us. It's a blessing. And we are, we are grateful here on the show, Questions Answered. Mm. Um, since we started this show, I noticed that a lot of Christians have, have many Christians have many questions oh, yes. that, which they have not asked. Yes. <laughs> so, um, if I watch the one you did on the demons, demons, the okay. Nephilim, yes, and, and the the yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, that was something. That was nice. Yes. yes. So, thank you so much. It's a blessing. Um, I hope, I hope you have noted down the point, and from today, start applying this point when you handle spiritual books mm. and you take your time. Mm. You will come back and send us a testimony of how you are now experiencing a real blessing mm. uh, of, of, a, of a, a book. Mm. So thank you so much once again. It's a blessing. Uh, Bishop. George, keep watching. Questions answered. Uh, remember, this week we'll be going into the study of the book of Leviticus. Mm. Yes. Because uh, last week during the flow prayer meeting, um, our Prophets, pastor, prophet, yeah. said that we should study the book of Leviticus, oh, yes. and we had a lot of questions coming in. I see. Uh, how can we be? How can we be helped to study uh, the book? So, on the questions answered program, we will be having a segment about fifteen minutes of a telescopic study, daga, 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 an overview daga. of the book of Leviticus. <laughs> and I tell you, you you will be you will be blessed. It's a blessing. So I think I will be coming back to you again. <laughs> I hope you find me for the book of Leviticus. <laughs> Hey guys, Bishop George is my body. We are always sharing scriptures and that's books. right. That's right. <laughs> and quotations. <laughs> so keep watching. Questions answered. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That was a beautiful conversation I had with my good friend, Bishop George. Bishop George, wherever you are watching, God bless you so much for availing yourself to share with us uh, these wonderful nuggets. Now, so this is your question answered snack. All right, and I'm sure I hope you enjoyed it. Well, we, we're moving on to the next um, segment where we take your questions. And maybe somebody just joined us um, some few minutes ago, so you didn't get the opportunity to write down the WhatsApp number through which you can send your message, your question. So please let us give our viewers another opportunity to write down the, 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 the number, the number through which you can send your questions. Okay, so um, right there on the screen, you will see the number. Please write down this number, save it on your phone, and do well to send us your question. Whatever question that you have on your mind that you want us to help you to answer, we are going to be trusting the Lord together to answer your question through the light of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. So please make sure, take your time and note down the number. We'll be right here waiting for your questions. Now, Remember that this program is an hour or less. We are not going to do more than one hour on this program. So if you have a question to ask, uh, please send your question now. Well, um, last week we started um, tackling a very delicate question. Um, someone sent a question to us. Hi, Bishop Pius. Um, how do I fully heal from being offended by one of the pastors in church? And I love my church but I am offended. So I took my time, we read out the table of contents of this special book that handles, that helps to diagnose and heal from offenses. Now, by popular request, I had so many uh, questions and 
input from our viewers like you. Um, I have so many questions here. Let me read one of them. Now, this one says that my question is how can I reconcile practically with one of the church members who has offended me because bitterness always leads to hatred and this breaks the law which says love your neighbor as you love yourself so the question of offenses keep uh, keeps coming up now in this episode i want to take my time for us to look at the chapter one of the book those who are offended and this is an attempt to answer your question about offenses and i am very sure that <clears throat> there are so many people who are watching who may be <clears throat> going through an offense or about to <clears throat> be offended about something so i want us to take our time on this program and handle this topic of, of offenses through the light of god's holy word the bible the scriptures because it is through the word of god that we can be helped to come out of offenses to be healed from offenses now there is something i want to say i want you to picture this scenario i learned this some years ago we have different problems in our lives there are some problems we can easily push them aside and move on there are some problems you cannot easily push them aside and move on you have to deal with it and kill it well and this is the scenario if you stay in a story building and let's say you are on the fifth floor or you are on the seventh floor there will be so many kinds of <clears throat> debt or unwanted materials you would want to <clears throat> get rid of for example if you just swept your room and there were some dust particles one of the ways to get rid of the dust particles is by standing up there in your balcony up there on the third floor and then blowing it away and you've gotten rid of the dust particles you want to get rid of dust blow it away and what have you done you have been able to get rid of the dust particles but if you want to get rid of a spoiled refrigerator you cannot easily stand by your balcony and blow it away you cannot easily stand by your balcony and push it down this is exactly what it means to deal with certain problems in our lives some problems are like dust particles just where you are and you have been able to get rid of it some problems they come in the form of refrigerators which you cannot easily stand at the balcony and throw it away and throw it away like that and throw away you would have to first of all call people to come upstairs at the level where you are and explain to them what you want done for them to help you to hold the refrigerator the sports refrigerator and then descend the steps the staircase one level after the other and come down to the ground floor take it to the refuse dump or the dustbin or the the storeroom and then you get rid of it so that is the scenario i want to give you now in my opinion anytime we are dealing with offenses we are we are we are having to deal with the refrigerator type of problems on the third floor we need help we need somebody to talk to we need somebody to hear us to give us a hearing ear and we also have to open up and allow ourselves to be healed so um this journey that we are about to embark on is a, is a special journey because it's going to take us some time so i think that the topic 
on offenses should not be just a one-time discussion. We have to take our time and go through. So thank you so much, the one who sent this question three weeks ago. Your question has developed a whole teaching and explanation on offenses and how to get rid of the offenses. Now today, I want us to begin with what offenses can do to you. I'm, I'm, I'm reading from the chapter one of the book, Those Who Are Offended. Now, did you know that there are six things that can happen to you when you take offenses? Offenses can do six things to you. I want us to run through these six things. Now, before that, I want you to help me. Let's read the scripture together. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 6, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now, Jesus said, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it will be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Now, verse 8, verse, chapter 18, verse 7 says, Go to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come, but woe to that man by whom the offense comes. Now, in these two scriptures, we see Jesus explaining to his hearers that there are people, if you start from the verse 6 of chapter 18, that is why I started from there for us to understand the context. He said, whoever causes one of these little ones. So Jesus was categorically speaking to people who intentionally cause others to sin. In his explanation, he said in verse 7 that, woe to the world because of offenses, because offenses must come. Then he said, woe to the man, that is the one who intentionally offend people, even though offenses must come. This particular word, this particular verse was going to those who intentionally offend people. So please listen attentively. Jesus is saying two things. Offenses must come. It means that you on the receiving side may become offended or take offense in something. But it is not always the case that the offender, the person who offended you, was intentional about it. I'm going to show you the reason why. In Luke chapter 7 verse 23, Jesus said, And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Yes, Jesus said offenses will come. And yes, he said the one who causes the offense, who is he? But for you to understand it very well, in Luke chapter 7, there was an issue surrounding John the Baptist's doubt about who Jesus was. Because he expected that Jesus would come to the prison to deliver him, but Jesus did not. Not only was he the one who announced Jesus, but he was also a relative. Now, after John the Baptist sent his disciples to ask Jesus whether he was the Christ, the one where he was, he announced, the one who was supposed to uh, uh, expect, Jesus, amongst the responses he gave, said, Blessed, you are blessed if you do not take offenses. In summary, Luke 7 23, and blessed is he who does not, who is not offended because of him. So you see Jesus talking about offenses in, in Matthew <clears throat> chapter 18, and even saying, Woe to the one through whom the offenses come. But in Luke chapter 7, we see that someone is getting offended because of him. But this time around, Jesus does not say, Because John the Baptist is offended in me then that means who unto me also Jesus. But rather, this time, Jesus says that in this particular case, you are blessed if you are not offended, if you do not take offense. That is why I'm giving you two scenarios. Offenses will come, but there's, the, there's a, a point where someone intentionally offends you. Then the second part is when the person who has offended you does not even know. The person does not even know. The person did not have in mind. It was not the person's motive to offend you. 
that a person in carrying their duties end up offending you. That is the type of offense that Jesus says that you are a blessed person when you are able to see it in that light and decide not to take offense. So let's talk about offenses now. I believe I have explained these two scriptures to you. Now, do you know that the word offense actually means, the word offense means, means to stumble or to trip, to slip, to stumble, to trip. So anytime you think about an offense, or as you are listening to us and watching, I want you to picture the scenario. An offense is like a piece of stick that comes to trip you as you are walking. It trips you, your steps. And then the next thing that happens is that you stumble. Sometimes there's a piece of block on your way. You did not see a misstep and you trip. Or sometimes there is a slippery, a slippery substance on the floor. Or I can give you an example of a banana peel. You can easily step on it and slip. So remember that offenses are, are those piece of stick, stumbling block, banana peel, which can cause you to fall. That is the meaning of the word offense. Now, listen attentively. You see that in all the examples I've given, they may be somebody it may be that someone intentionally put them there to cause you to trip or to fall. And it may be that unintentionally, somebody ate banana, somebody was working, somebody was doing something and left something there unattended to, which caused you to. So even in the natural, in the natural scenario, the, the thing that causes you to trip or to fall may be intentional or unintentional. And Jesus said, you are blessed if you do not allow the offense to come to you because it may be unintentional but when you take offenses and you allow offense when you when you take offense in something and you allow you allow the offense to mature and go through its stages it will do you so much harm so quickly my dear friends watching i want to read to you six things that offense can do to you Remember that offense and offense or offenses and offense means a stumbling block, a slipping by, a slipping on or a tripping over something. In the natural, when you trip, in the natural, when you have a misstep and you fall on a stumbling block, so many things can happen. One of the things that can happen, number one, offenses can hurt you. Yes, when you trip or when you when you when, when you stumble, there are two things you can you, you can fall down and get up. You can fall down and notice that you have been hurt so badly. So always understand when you are dealing with offenses, immediately you trip, immediately you stumble. Remember that you can be hurt. There may be somebody watching right now. You are hurt. You are going through hurt serious hit and the reason for the hit is because you stumbled you were offended you took offense number two offenses can anger you offenses or an offense can be the reason why anger will enter into your heart now do not forget that anger is the door that opens to something else called hatred if it is not well handled <laughs> now number three offenses can produce resentment resentment i told you that anger is a door that opens to hatred now resentment is the, the third thing that can happen when you take offense now number four offenses can make you into an unforgiving person. We all need to forgive in this life because if we do not forgive, our sins, our mistakes will not also be forgiven. But there is something that can happen to you that can make you into an unforgiving person. 
And that thing is an offense. So please remember, number four, an offense can make you or turn you into an unforgiving person. Number five, an offense can bring problems or offenses can bring problems. Do you know that most of the wars in this world, including the First World War and the Second World War, were all due to offenses, individuals or groups become offended in something and then it becomes like a matchstick that sets up a whole forest ablaze offense now number six and the last but not the least number six offenses will bring woes the word woe always calls to mind about a curse a curse in the scripture we read in matthew chapter 18 jesus said who Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 7, woe to the world because of offenses. So the problems in this world, the troubles that we, we face in this world are due to offenses. You can see a beautiful country, a beautiful church, a beautiful organization, beautiful family. The one thing that lands on the family and you realize that a woe, a problem, a curse has fallen on the family. A beautiful church is about to break up and scatter. It will become a woe to the members. What is the cause? Offenses and offense. So these are the six things that can happen to you when you caught offense around you in your bosom. So quickly, let's go to the point. Point number one, offenses can hurt you. Point number two, offenses can anger you. Point number three, offenses can produce resentment and anger. Point number four, offenses can make you an unforgiving person. Point number five, offenses can bring problems. Problems like the First World War, Second World War, and other major problems in the world. Number six, offenses will bring woes, curses. Now, let me read some few paragraphs in the book. Just two paragraphs. Number one, note these down. These are noteworthy an offense is a turning point in your life offense is an emergency like a snake that causes people to quickly rise up to kill it offenses must be dealt with with as swiftly as it rests its head and then the last paragraph i want to read is this you must keep your spirit pure and free from offense lest you metamorphose into the exact opposite of what you have believed you believe in peace you believe in love you believe in so many things but this thing called offense can change you it can metamorphose you and you begin to act exactly the opposite of what you have always believed in I trust that you have been blessed. You have learned something this evening about offenses. Take your time and also read the book. The title of the book is Those Who Are Offended. Towards the end of this show, I'll be showing you how you can be able to get this book free of charge on your phone, on your tablet, and you will be blessed. God bless you so much. We're moving to the next segment quickly where we are going to talk about the book of Leviticus. But before that, let me answer two or more questions that were sent to us. Okay, now, there's a question here. <laughs> now, this question is very interesting because the person says that greetings, Bishop, as a Christian, you are supposed to walk in love how do you deal with working daily with people who are generally not nice and not despising them? So this is a very interesting question as well. So I want to say thank you to the one who sent this question. You said that as a Christian, you are supposed to walk in love. You are quoting from Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2. Now Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 says, And walk in love. But it does not end there. 
Let's continue the whole scripture. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Hallelujah. So in this scripture, we see that we are admonished to walk in love, just not to walk in love, but there is somebody whose example we must look at to walk in love. And that example is as Christ also loved us and has given himself as an offering and a sacrifice. So please remember that whenever you are going to walk in love with your mates, with your friends, with your colleagues, remember the word sacrifice. There is something you are going to lose as you embark on walking in love. Okay? Now, your question is, how do I let me look at your question again. How do you deal with working daily with people who generally are not nice? Now, your question is so genuine. And I'm so happy that you asked this question because when Jesus taught on the mountain, the famous sermon on the mount in Matthew chapter 5, he, he, he taught his disciples very deep teachings that have to do with your, the Christian life, how to live as a Christian. And this is what I want to say. Every Christian listening should not take lightly the teachings of Jesus. If you use the Bible with the red letter, you will notice that the teachings of Jesus, the words of Jesus are in red. Please do not lightly take those words. I know we enjoy reading the Bible, especially Psalm 23. It's nice. We take Psalm 23 so seriously. But you see, the same way that you take Psalm 23 seriously, you should even take the more the words of Jesus Christ. Now, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus spoke about how to live with people who are not nice and how you are expected as a Christian to live. Now, because I don't want to come in to try to even explain the scriptures to dilute it, I would like to read from a contemporary version, okay, of the Bible. So I will choose the good news translation of the Bible. So when I had finished reading through, I do not need to even explain because the good news translation of the Bible is down to earth and the, the English is basic, is down to earth. You can understand it. Now, look at Matthew chapter 5 from verse 43 to verse 48. Let's read it together. Jesus is about to answer your question directly. How to live with people who are not nice. People you work with who are generally not nice. How do you deal with them? This is a direct answer from Jesus. You have heard that it was said, love your friends and hate your enemies. Verse 44. But now I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Verse 45. So that you may become the children of your father in heaven. He makes his son to shine on bad and good people alike and gives rain to those who do good and to those who do evil. Verse 46. Why should God reward you if you love only the people who love you? Even the tax collectors do that. Verse 47. And if you speak only to your friends, have you done anything out of the ordinary? Even the pagans do that. You must be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. Jesus has answered your question. <laughs> how to deal, how, how do you deal or live with people who are generally not, not nice at your workplace? You have to keep loving them. And there are some two words Jesus brought up in this version that I love. He said, if you love people who love you back, what a, what a reward do you get? You see, when we get to heaven, even here on earth, God rewards one of the rewards that come to us is not loving those who love you. Loving those who love you, loving back someone who loves you, does not bring any reward. I'm reading the Bible. This is scripture. It may not make sense, but this is the way Bible. What brings reward is when you love people who hate you and you love people who are not nice. So when we get to heaven, or even right here on this earth, you will see that some people 
have rewards, a certain kind of blessing upon their life. Sometimes you may not even understand. They don't pray like the way you pray. They don't fast like the way you fast. But somehow their lives seem to be blessed or they seem to have some reward from heaven. Look at it. Jesus says that people who love those who are not nice to them are the ones who receive reward. Then the second thing that God and Jesus said was, he says, if there's 47, if you speak only to your friends, have you done anything out of the ordinary? The second thing is that God expects us to live out of the ordinary. You see, the ordinary Christian or the ordinary human being lives on tit for tat. You do me, I do you. You don't talk to me, I do not talk to you. If you do not love me, I will not love you. But in the Sermon on the Mount, I'm, I'm, I, am talk, I am intentionally stressing on the Sermon on the Mount because today we have all forgotten, relegated, we've thrown the Sermon on the Mount somewhere and living our own lives, especially life in the 21st century and especially life as a Christian in today's world. Yes. What Jesus really taught us to do is what we have to obey and do. It is not easy. It does not make sense. Even if you're a pastor, you preach some topics like this, it, 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 it will make you unpopular. Do you understand it? Yes. But I'm not reading my own words. These are the words of Jesus. We are reading. So God wants you to live above the ordinary. And living above the ordinary is not flying to this, flying to space or doing something naturally out of the ordinary. Living out of the ordinary or living an extraordinary life in the eyes of God, based on Jesus' teachings, are when you love people who don't love you back, and also when you talk to people who don't talk to you, when you, are, you, you, you do the opposite of what people do to you. In the eyes of God, that is what makes you different and ordinary, extraordinary. Okay, thank you. Now, oh, there's another verse here, a scripture here. So let's go and read it. Because we're reading the word of God. This is questions answered. You asked a question. We are trying to answer your question here. Romans chapter 12, verse 17 to 21. I'm going to read again from the Good News Translation. Okay. Now listen to this. If someone has done you wrong, do not repay him with a wrong. Try to do what everyone considers to be good. Verse 18. Do everything possible on your part to live in peace with everybody. 19. Never take revenge, my friends, but instead let God's anger do it. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay back, says the Lord. Verse 20. Instead, as the scripture says, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them a drink. By For by doing this, you will make them burn with shame. Verse 21. Do not let evil defeat you. Instead, conquer evil with good. Hallelujah. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. So here we are. Here we have another scripture from Romans chapter 12, where we see the same instruction that Jesus gave us on how to respond to people who are not nice to you as a Christian. As a Christian. Hallelujah. Now, something remarkable about this scripture is that when you do good to those who do evil to you, it does not mean that God is not going to sort them out. It does not mean that God is not going to handle them. Rather, this scripture is a dangerous scripture. Actually, it's one of the worst things that you can ever do to somebody who, 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 who is not nice to you. When you do this, when you, do, when you show them good, what you're actually doing is that you are handing them over into God's hand. And God says that when that happens, you leave it into his hands and he is the one who will deal with them out of his anger. So it's, it's, it's even something that I think when you are not nice to people who are not nice to you, it's like you are even taking over to do your own thing. On the part of the people, it's even better. Because when you begin to treat them good, who, who are not nice to you, then you are now changing the game. You are now putting them into the hands of God. 
And God now decides what he's going to do to me. God bless you. I hope you have learned something from this one. Okay. We have a third question here. The question says, is Jesus God or he, is he the son of God? And the person quotes John 1.1 1, 1 and John 1.14. Okay. What does John 1, 1 say? John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That's John 1.1. 1, 1. Okay, so here in John 1, 1, we see that the word was God. Do that mean that Jesus is God? Now, in John 1, 14, the Bible says, And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the Father, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. So in this scripture, we see the expression, the only begotten of the Father, which, which means the only son of the Father, full of grace and faith. So the question is, is Jesus God, or is he the son of God? Beautiful question. Well, the answer is, he is both. Your question reminds me of another scripture in the Bible. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, I love the scripture. It settles the whole issue. Listen to it. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It says, end without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. Seen of angels, preached unto Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Beautiful. What I want to show you in this Bible verse is the first sentence. End without controversy. You see, the question you asked poses a controversy. The question you asked already brings out a controversy. So Jesus, is he God or is he the son of God? Somebody is a uh, here you go, there is a controversy. Something is inconsistent about Jesus. Is he God or is he the Son of God? But the same Bible, Scripture, in 1 Timothy 3, 16 says, end without controversy. Before you start thinking of controversy, inconsistency, the Scripture says, end without controversy. Do not allow this to bring controversy to your mind. It says, end without controversy. What's the next sentence? Great is the mystery of godliness. I love this. In other words, there are some things in this world. They are mysteries. If you want to use your normal human mind to understand it fully and 100%, you will enter into even error and controversy. So in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, Paul says, without controversy, don't even think or allow any thoughts to come into your mind that something is inconsistent. Jesus is not what he, he is said to be because here he is the son of God. Over there he is God. So what is it? The Bible says without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. It means, and then he, the, the next sentence is that God was manifest in the flesh. So that is where it ends. Now listen, for God to be manifest in the flesh. He is God, and at the same time, he's the son of God. It's a mystery. And it is not just a mystery, it is a great mystery. So please, don't let this begin a controversy without controversy. God bless you. Hallelujah. Well, so, 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 um, do we have another question here? Alright, I think that this is, looking at my time, we've, we've really said a lot of things, so uh, I don't want us to drag this segment. We have another more segment to go to. So please um, send your questions and let's take our time to deal with your questions. It means that we may not be able to answer some of your questions that are coming in right now, but we will answer your questions next week as we prepare and come on to answer your questions. Now, remember the last segment of today's um, program, we are going to start a telescopic overview of the book of Leviticus. Now, quickly, I want us to go to a very beautiful garden. It's called the Vineyard of Engedi. And this beautiful garden is in the First Love Center. And uh, I was there to take a video uh, of model marriage. It's a beautiful garden where uh, weddings are officiated. So I went there to, you know, talk to you about model marriage. 
Stay tuned, don't go anywhere. Just keep watching. Uh, let's go to the Garden of Engedi and we'll be back. We're going to read a question and an answer from the Model Marriage Book. God bless you. And don't go away. The segment gets more interesting and better. So we are going to the Vineyard of Engedi and then we'll be coming back to the telescopic overview of the Book of Leviticus. Stay tuned and I'll be right back with you. Wow! What a wonderful time we are spending today in our program questions answered and i'm sure you are also enjoying the program so far well we have now arrived right at the session where we read out a question from the model marriage book and then i will read out the answer as well by the way on tuesday that was yesterday did you watch the flow prayer meeting? Because during the flow prayer meeting, Prophet talked about us reading the modern marriage book. And he made a comment that we need to have the book with us in our rooms with us. I want to show that video to you quickly. And then I'll be reading out a question to you. So just watch this video and then I'll come back to tell you more about what we have in the model marriage. These are the duties. So if you look at the model marriage counseling book, which is quite a popular book, it has duties. There's a chapter called duties of husband. All right. Duties of the wife. That's the piety, the obligations. Are you showing the book or not? Yes. It's just for marriage. This book is for counseling, marriage counseling. But you need it for your rest of your life. Yeah. All right? That is a blessing. If All right. Beautiful. I hope you heard it for yourself. Now, I want to repeat again. The Model Marriage Book is a very practical instructive book for married couples but one of the mistakes we do is that when we are getting ready to marry we take the book serious we read it cover to cover and then after we get married we throw the book away just after six months of marriage school but that is wrong when you get married that is the time that you have to even take the book more seriously and that is the reason why on this program we take our time to read out some questions now did you know that the last chapter of the modern marriage book has 80 questions or 80 challenges or problems in marriages and they are questions and answers to those challenges today i want to read to you um, one of the questions in the book this is what he says he says that he does not chat with me he prefers to speak to friends on phone I only get information from such conversations he holds with his friends so this is somebody's problem a marital problem the husband does not chat with her now what is the answer okay now, listen to the answer because the answer is in the book. A couple must make every effort to speak with each other. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15, it is a sign that there is friendship in the marriage. Sometimes it is difficult for the two to converse. And this is because they may have learned to do so during courtship it may also be a sign of a deteriorating relationship it is not right that a husband reduces his wife to somebody who must only eavesdrop in order to know what is going on in his life if there was speaking before and it is now gone take your time and identify the causes 
and deal with them. On the other hand, if it has never been a feature of the marriage, then it is something that you must work hard at in the marriage. At least there must be something that both of you may be interested in. If not, take time to learn the things your husband is interested in and converse intelligently with him. Don't leave out prayer. Remember that gradually things will become better. Remember though that a man also needs male friends to talk to. Now, you can refer to chapter 9 of the Modern Marriage Book. Chapter 9 talks about communication in marriage. And there's a portion that sheds more light on choose to speak life. So go and look out for chapter 9 in the Modern Marriage Book. The chapter 9 talks about communication in marriage. And look out for the part, the subtitle on choose to speak life. God bless you. And we are moving on to the next segment of questions answered today. God bless you once again. All right, all right, all right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I am sure that for those of us who are married and uh, also those who are preparing to get married, if you've learned a lesson, please, let's all endeavor. Do not throw away the modern marriage book. It's a classic book. It's a very relevant book you will need in your marriage. Not the book you read for only six months. Not the book you study for six months to get married and then throw away. But a book that you take along and use throughout your marriage. Okay. So I'm speaking to somebody. Maybe you are 10 years already into your marriage. Seven years, five years. Just be honest. When was the last time you you read through the book? When was the last time you even went to look out for the answer to a problem in your in your book, in, in the modern marriage book? So I don't want to, you know, dwell on this for a long time. You know what to do. Let's go back to the book, Husbands and Wives. Let's sit together and be reading these books, especially the last chapter. The questions there, a lot of questions and problems and challenges. Let's use the book and be blessed. Hallelujah. Well, let's go to <laughs> let's go to the book of Leviticus. So oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The book of Leviticus. Now, I, I want to know from you: Have you ever tried to read the book of Leviticus? How did you find it? Um, I've asked different people about their opinions of the book of Leviticus. Uh, I, I had different interesting um, answers. One of them says that the book of Leviticus is boring. It's boring. Someone said the book of Leviticus is like reading a telephone directory. <laughs> I agree with that person because you see, when you are reading Genesis, there are a lot of interesting stories. The story of Adam, the story of Cain and Abel, the story of Joseph, the story of Joseph, the story of Jacob. Interesting stories in Genesis. When you go to Exodus, very powerful stories about Egypt and Moses. But immediately you leave Exodus, you land right into the book of Leviticus and then all of a sudden everything has changed there is no story there is no narrative everything is just straight with offerings and sacrifices and offerings and sacrifices and, and so many people said they, they, they are not very interested in that book because it's boring someone also said uh <laughs> I'm not familiar with, I'm, I'm not familiar, I mean, I've been a Christian for all my life, but I am not familiar with the things in Leviticus. Uh, I said, oh, really? 
things like what is it? I mean, taking an taking an animal like a goat or a a, a, a dove to to church. He said, "No familiar to church." And then before I enter into the church, there's a priest standing at the the door, the gate of the church, who holds the head of the the dove, the turtle dove, and wrinkle it, twist it, and tear it, and then blood is oozing all over. Us. What? I'm not familiar. With this. <laughs> and then, um, last but not the least, someone said. Leviticus seems irrelevant because what has it got to do with me in 2024 when we know very well that we are not under the law? <laughs> so, um, does any of these points resonate <laughs> with something that you, uh, you also think about the book of Leviticus? As, as we are reading through the reasons why people find the book of Leviticus very difficult, why they don't read the book of Le Leviticus. Are you also finding something that agrees with what you think? All right, so let me hear from you. Write in your, in your comment, write us a comment. What do you also think about the book of Leviticus? What makes you not to be able to read this book through? Okay, so... Um, what are we going to do? We are going to do what we call a telescopic overview of the book of Leviticus. Now, when I use the expression telescopic, I want to read to you quickly the meaning of telescopic study. Where am I going to read this from? There is a book written by Bishop Dagwood Mills. The title of the book is How You Can Have an effective quiet time with God every day. Have you heard of that book before? All right. Now, in that book, there is a chapter, chapter 9. In chapter 9, we learn about the three types of Bible study. Now, what I'm coming to do now is the, the Bible study called telescopic Bible study. Now, Number one, how to do a telescopic Bible study. Number one, read a whole book at a time, preferably in one sitting. Because you are reading large sections, it will be easier to read more modern versions of the Bible. Now, this program is called Questions Answered. So in this program, or on this program, or during this program, we are not going to have the full tele but the good news is that on saturday mornings from six o'clock a.m to seven o'clock a.m gmt that is where we have our the program read your bible pray every day there we have telescopic bible study in fact we have even finished the letter to Galatians and we have started the letter to the Ephesians so I want to take this opportunity to also invite you okay now I'm doing this to let you know that there's a program that goes on called read your Bible pray every day where we do telescopic Bible study so this is not the, the platform for telescopic Bible study I'm just doing this to give you an overview so that you can be able to start reading the book of Leviticus and then to also direct you to Saturday mornings from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. where we have the telescopic Bible study for one hour. Okay, so point number one, you have to, we, are, we read the book through, but what you need to do is to use a contemporary version of the Bible. Okay, like Good News Translation, the Living Bible, the New Living Translation. And what other translations do you have? Please, King James Version is not a contemporary version because the English, <laughs> the English is not, uh, is not easy. Number two, build up a complete picture. And that is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to build a complete picture of the book so you can be able to see the book well and then understand how to study it. 
Number three, locate the central theme, key verses or passages. And then number, number four, do a microscopic Bible study on keywords that you come across. So these are four simple steps on how to do a telescopic Bible study. What I'm going to do right now is point number two. I'm going to build a complete picture. I want us to stand far and look at Leviticus and break it down for you to see how interesting the book is. Okay. All right. So where do we begin? Mm. All right. Let's begin with the position of the book of Leviticus amongst the five books of Moses. I'm sure you know that the, the, the first five books of the Bible, known as the, books, the five books of Moses, are Genesis, uh -huh, Exodus, and what again? Leviticus, and then what again? Numbers, and what again? Deuteronomy. Beautiful. So I've tried to, um, I've tried to, you know, put down a graphic presentation for you to see, so that you can keep it in your mind, in your memory. So right on your screen now, you can see Leviticus. But now Leviticus, we are looking at Leviticus in 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 relation with the five books of Moses. Now when we look at the graphic presentation I have on the screen, okay, you will notice that Leviticus finds itself right in the middle of the five books. That means there are two books before and then there are two books after it. Do you see what I'm seeing? So I'm giving you the full picture of the book of Leviticus. This is telescopic Bible study. So what comes into your mind? The book of Leviticus is the center of the five books of Moses. It's right in the middle, number three, and there are Genesis and Exodus before it, and then Numbers and Deuteronomy after it. Great. Now, you're also going to see some interesting facts about Leviticus. Okay. Now, the book of Leviticus is right in the middle. But let's start from Genesis. Now, Genesis means beginnings. Okay, so that's the meaning of Genesis. Then Exodus means going out. Then Leviticus actually means the Levites. And then Numbers, as the name goes, it is statistics. And then Deuteronomy means second law. Because Dito, Ditoro is second, and then Numos. Numos means law, so the second law. Why second law? Because in Exodus, God gave the children of Israel some laws. If you remember the Ten Commandments. Now, in Deuteronomy, God repeated the Ten Commandments again to them for a purpose, for a reason. But this is not the platform to talk about it. Now, look at the graphic presentation again on your screen you will see that Leviticus is that book that centers down on one particular tribe. So if you see the parts that I've put in red, you will notice that Genesis, the book of Genesis, talks about the universe, the world. Okay? Then Exodus zooms in a little to the nation Israel and how they stepped out of Egypt. So the whole book is about Israel. But when you go to Leviticus, the camera zooms in on one tribe, the tribe of Levi. When you come out of Leviticus, this time around you are zooming out, you go to the book of Numbers and you see that we have gotten back to the nation Israel. We are zooming out. The nation Israel. Then, when you get to Deuteronomy, you see God is speaking to the children of Israel in the backdrop of the universe, the whole world again. So what do you see? Again, Leviticus is indeed the center of the five books because you can see on your screen that Genesis, which is the first book of the five books, 
talks about the universe that is universal and then Deuteronomy which is the last talk about the universe the universal then Exodus which is the second book talk about the nation Israel as a national the nation Israel the numbers also talks about the nation Israel then when you zero in when you go to the center you will see that the book Leviticus talks about only the tribe of Levi isn't it amazing amazing wow now let's look at where the books were also written Genesis in Genesis we see um, apart from the Garden of Eden and all the different places that we see in Genesis the main places of history we have the Chaldea and then Canaan where God called Abraham and said he was going to take him to Canaan then in Exodus we are in Egypt just Egypt now in Leviticus the book was written when the children of Israel were under the Mount Sinai amazing is that not so then numbers was written when they were moved moving from Sinai to the Negev and then Deuteronomy also spans between when they were crossing and about to enter into the promised land so where we see them crossing and passing through Edom and Moab interesting now let's look at the time frame of the books Genesis talks about centuries in the past even if you look at the ages of the people Genesis talk about you see that they lived for hundreds of years now the book of Exodus <laughs> deals with a time frame of about 300 years then amazingly Leviticus time frame is exactly one month and the numbers 40 years the time frame for numbers is 40 years because numbers is going to deal with the statistics of the ch children of Israel for the 40 years they spent in the desert and then when you get in Deuteronomy you will see that God is speaking to them in a projected form and saying that from now on to centuries in the future do you see something interesting about the time frame you notice that Genesis and Deuteronomy again talk about centuries then Exodus and Numbers are years okay between 340 years then only Leviticus this time frame is one month one month again we see Leviticus in the middle in the center by the way when you think about all these wonderful facts the question you will ask yourself is did they intentionally arrange the books in that way I don't know but it's it's one of the wonders of the Bible that that also brings our attention to God's fingerprint <laughs> that is why you must really cherish your Bible the Bible is not just an ordinary book now let's go into the book of Leviticus now now I've shown you the place of the book of Leviticus in relation to the five books amazing so you wonder with all these facts how come the book of Leviticus was right in the middle in the center of the five books everything about it shows that Leviticus should be placed in the middle in the center of the book so it's an interesting book you have to get to know about now there are some other interesting things about the book of Leviticus that uh, I wish I could take my time to tell you about now yes so the book of Leviticus is truly an interesting book as we have seen we have just looked at the relationship or the book of Leviticus in relation to Genesis Exodus and the numbers 
and Deuteronomy. Now, remember that every book of the law, the, the five books of Moses, they build on each other. In other words, Genesis begins and then Exodus continues what is in Genesis. Then Exodus continues and then Leviticus continues what is in Exodus. That then Leviticus continues and then Numbers continues what was in Exodus and then the Numbers continues and Deuteronomy continues. Do you understand it? Great. So that is how the books, the five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and then Deuteronomy. That is how they are related to each other. Now, something interesting about the book of Leviticus is that in the middle, in the center of the five books, Leviticus tells, Leviticus tells us about what God requires from us. Because in Exodus, God has just delivered the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt. So in Leviticus, God is going to show them how he wants them to be dedicated to him in the same way that he delivered them. In Exodus, we see how God saved them from bondage. In Leviticus, God spells out how they must serve him. In Exodus, God gives the details of the tabernacle to Moses. In Leviticus, God gives details of what must be done, the work of the ministry, what must be done in the tabernacle. Another thing about the book of, Ex um, the book of Leviticus is the book of Leviticus also shows us how the children of Israel must be grateful and show gratitude in view of God's grace of bringing them out of Egypt in Exodus. So now, you, you, do you see how the book of Leviticus, you know, throws more light, more light uh, on our Christian life? So the book of Leviticus can be summarized um, by Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. He said that, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves, your bodies. So in view of God's mercies, of what happened in Exodus, now, now that you have, now, now that you have left Egypt and you are about to enter into the promised land, this is how I want you to live. So that is, that is the book of Leviticus for you. So that is why the book of Leviticus is very important to every Christian. Why? When you study the book of Leviticus, you will learn what God really requires from us, what God wants from us. You know, uh, let's do this quickly and end our studies. And next week, we are going to continue. Okay, now, the book of Leviticus has 27 chapters. So, right on your screen, I'm going to break down the chapters into, into different topics, which will help you to be able to study the book. All right. Now, before we start that, I want to also let you know that the book of Leviticus has a key phrase, a key phrase, because we are doing telescopic Bible study. If you remember, then point number four says you should look, point number three says we should look at for key phrases or key passages. In the book of Leviticus, the key phrase is be holy. Are you not surprised? Be holy. The phrase be holy appears 19 times in the book of Leviticus. That means the main idea, that means the theme of the book of Leviticus was this. God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and he, he expects them to be holy, to stand apart 
consecrated and different from other people. So that is what the book of Leviticus means to us. And that is why last week I drew your attention on the book. There is a book. The title of the book is the, uh, How You Can Become a Strong Christian. Now, in the book, How You Can Become a Strong Christian, there is a chapter where um, the author, Bishop Daghiwad Mills, talks about how to be holy, how to be a holy Christian. And he draws, he draws all the scriptures from Leviticus. Now, if I ask you a question, in the New Testament or as New Testament Christians, does holiness play an important role in our lives? Is it important to be holy also in the New Testament? If your answer is yes, then the book of Leviticus should not be thrown away because it is very important. There is something we are going to learn about holiness from that book. Okay. All right. Now, Leviticus, 27 chapters. Now, when you look on your screen, I have done the demarcations, break, broken the chapters into different headings. So you can see on your screen that from chapters 1 to 7, basically, we are talking about offerings and sacrifices. From chapters 8 to 10, we are talking about the priesthood. Then from chapter 11 to chapter 15, we are talking about clean and unclean things. Chapter 16 stands alone, and chapter 16 is about the day of atonement. Chapter 17 to chapter 22 talks about common and holy things. Chapter 23 to chapter 20 to 25 is talking about worship. Then, last but not the least, chapter 26 to chapter 27 talks about talk about sanctions and vows. Sanctions and vows. Now, if you look at what you see on the screen, I have I have color coded the different headings. Now, this is the purpose. If you look at the first chapters, chapters 1 to 7, chapters 1 to 7 corresponds with chapters 26 to 27, where we talk about offerings and sacrifices and sanctions and vows. Then chapters 8 to 10 talks about the priesthood and it corresponds, they correspond with chapters, chapters 23 to 25, where we talk about worship. Then chapters 11 to 15 to chapters, chapters 11 to 15 and chapters 17 to 22 also talk about clean and unclean things and common and common things, which also correspond. Then in the center of the book, the middle of the book is chapter 16, which talks about the day of atonement. Now, the day of atonement is is telling us about what God is going to do through Christ Jesus, where Jesus Christ is going to die for our sins. Now, something you need to look at is that from chapters 1 to chapters 15, and then from chapters 17 to chapters 27, look at it very well. Everything that God talks about and gives us a command hangs on chapter 16, which is that day the day of atonement. I hope you have taken good notice of the headings and the chapters. So take your time and write it down. Take a screenshot and use it to study the book of Leviticus. So this is a telescopic study of the book of Leviticus. We are looking at the whole picture so you can be able to appreciate the book and study it well. Now, the last thing that I wanted to say about the book of Leviticus is that the book of Leviticus is a special book because out of the 66 books in the Bible, it is only the book of Leviticus that has the major part of the book, major part of the book where we hear God's direct words. One of the things about the book of Leviticus is there are no stories. All that you hear is, and the Lord said to Moses, and then what the Lord actually said to Moses comes out. So among the 66 books, the book of Leviticus contains more of the direct words of God. 
the direct words of God. If we were going to put the direct words of God in red letters, like in the New Testament, the book of Leviticus would be the one book with more red letters because basically Leviticus is about God's direct words. So I wish you a wonderful and an exciting journey, an exciting study of the book of Leviticus. The Lord bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are gradually coming to the end of another beautiful, exciting episode of Questions Answered. I hope you were blessed. I hope you learned something today. So let us know what you learned today. Um, send us a message and let us know that today's episode was a blessing. And let us also know about our telescopic Bible study on Leviticus. Have you learned something new today? God bless you. Now, today, I want all of us watching to prepare our hearts and our minds to give an offering to the Lord. You know, as we were looking at the telescopic Bible study of Leviticus, one of the things you will learn is that God expected the children of Israel to also show gratitude in everything that he did for them. If you are watching this program and you are blessed, if you are watching this program and you have learned something spiritually, there's an addition, an add-on to your spiritual life. One of the things that the Bible requires always is that if you are taught spiritual things, it is important that you also share your substance. You share whatever you have as monetary financial to help with the propagation, the continuation of God's word. So you know very well, this broadcast you are enjoying, you are looking at, did not come just by osmosis. Many things have gone on to make this broadcast possible. I encourage you this evening to also open your heart and let God speak to your heart and give an offering to that effect. And I believe that as you are giving, God's word concerning giving will also be accomplished in your life. When you give, it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. So may the Lord bless you mightily. I want to share a word of prayer with you watching. As you are giving your offering, preparing your heart, I pray that the Lord will touch your heart and that you will give according to what he's laying on your heart to give. The Lord bless you and may his word come to pass directly in your life that he said, give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. Answer somebody's prayer. Lord, give somebody a miracle as they are looking up to you and believing you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. As the month is coming to an end, I pray that the Lord will rescue somebody from disgrace and God will give you also a miracle in Jesus' name. A miracle that will silence the voice and the accusations of the enemy. A, a miracle that will, that will make those who laugh and mock at you know that your God is not dead. He's alive. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Now, I want you to carefully look at the offering um, instructions very well. Today is the first time we are using this number you are seeing on your screen. So, please pay careful attention. Okay, pay a careful attention to the number. And one of the things I would like you to do is to write down this number and save it as question answered offering okay question answered offering now this number is a unique number for offerings for this particular service remember when you are sending your offering you will see the flow church as the name i encourage you please do your best and give your offering especially if you have been blessed this evening by our um, program so god bless you take your time and then note down the number and send your offering to this number. If you are outside Ghana, in any country, 
there are different platforms you can see send wave world remit and uh, we also have tap tap send so whichever country that you find yourself you can use any of these platforms and then send the offering through the mtn mobile money number on the screen may god indeed bless you as you send your offering this evening please take your time send your offering and be sure that you have received a notification that the offering has gone through god bless you once again god bless you and always remember that wednesdays at exactly 6 p.m gmt questions answered will be coming your way again the lord bless you i'm giving you some time take your time and send your offering to the number on the screen okay send your offering god bless you everywhere you are in ghana this is the mobile money number please take note of the number it's a new number we are using for this particular program so don't be um don't don't be complacent say oh i know the number already i know the one that you have already saved on your phone that one is the general flow offering number this particular number is the question answered offering number so please make sure that you do the right thing and send the offering to the right place god bless you again well i want to take this opportunity to ask you to send in your questions again in case you are watching this program and uh, maybe you just joined us so you have missed the other part of the program where we talked about the modern marriage we talked about uh, i shared some things with uh, bishop george now what i need you to do is i need you to write to us send us your questions and everything that you believe that you have on your mind you want to ask just send the question to us and we are going to take our time and answer your questions so we are going to keep the number on the screen so you can send your questions to us the lord bless you have a beautiful and a wonderful evening and bye bye Thank you.